Yeah, glad to see some new faces here. So I'm Vaughn, Spirit of Health. This is my business. I started about 10 years ago, for those of you who don't know who I am. I've been doing this for, um, I did it five years over in Overland Park with my dad and a little tiny 400 square foot nothing. Lupe remembers those days and does too. But, uh, but I've been here in Grandview for four years and we've just been really <laughs> blessed. We've expanded a lot and herbs that we're gonna talk about today is really one of our foundational things and I, I love, love, love to talk about herbs. Um, so I'm a naturopath, I'm an herbalist, um, I'm an iridologist and I, so I just, I'm fascinated by the human body, health, nutrition, healing. Um, God is at the focus and the center of everything we do. Um, so that is our foundation of who we are. We love to say we love God, we love people, we love health. Probably in that order. So I just want to ask out of curiosity, why if somebody wants to share, like what led you to come to this class about herbs and herbal formulas? Anybody want to say why they were interested in this class? Yeah. To, to improve your health. Yeah. That's a good one. Anyone else? I've been taking them for years. I want to understand them more. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So she said, I've been taking them for years and I just want to understand them more. Yeah. People get like kind of overwhelmed with all the information out there related to nutrition and herbs. And I just say, well, just, you know, God made so many amazing things. It does seem like a lot. <laughs> and uh, herbs is something that has kind of been forgotten in our culture a little bit, sadly. So anybody else? Yes. I was diagnosed with a type 2 diabetes. Okay. So the doctor wanted to do a lot of the uh, pharmaceutical drugs. Yeah. So they started having different reactions. So I started researching, you know, herbs and hearing the benefits of it. So I decided to start looking into it and start taking it. Hallelujah. Well, praise God you're here. I mean, this class is for you, you know. So she said, just for the, the sake of the camera, she said she... Uh, got a diagnosis at the doctor and she didn't want to do maybe the drugs and wanted to find some natural therapies and read about herbs and just wants to learn more about some of those alternatives to her to her situation yeah and uh, yeah God did give us everything we need on this planet for health and healing so I will mainly going to talk about herbs and herbal formulas in this class this morning but if you are staying in the later classes I'm gonna get a lot into um, talking about the differences between herbal medicine and pharmaceutical medicine and a lot of this, you know, some of the safety issues people are concerned with. And I'm going to get into a lot of those things in, in a couple other classes. I'm doing three of the classes today. Uh, Mike's doing two. Uh, he's actually created the majority of our formulas. So we have over 60 formulas um, that we created ourselves. And then Hannah's doing our other class. <coughs> so. Hannah's our manager and she's awesome. All right, so let's get into this. Um, the reason I get, I just get really excited about talking about herbs is because I believe it's the original medicine God gave us. And although we might believe there is a time and a place for the modern medical system, which I do believe there's a time and place for it, um, it has mostly replaced what God has given us and we've forgotten how to use the natural things on this earth. And so just one of the, one of our main focuses, one of our main goals is to get people back to God, back to nature, back to creation, back to original design, understanding that we do have all the tools and resources we need for health or for restoring health if you have a health condition, if we understood it, if we knew about it, if we were educated about it. There's a lot of forces out there not wanting us to know this stuff, right? So I am going to start just because since we're talking about herbs, has anybody ever read any of Jean Guillon stuff? No? Okay. It's amazing. She has a, a really cool book called Experiencing the Depths of Jesus Christ. But this is a, a book she did. She did a commentary on some of the books of the Bible, and this is her commentary on Genesis. And I thought it was really fascinating relating to herbs because if you think about God and creation and how he created the world, and if you look at the creation story in like the first 10 verses, you know, he's just creating the heavens and the earth and everything was dark and it was void and it was lifeless. And then do you know what the first thing is that God created that had any form of life on the earth? It's actually not a trick question because it's herbs is what we're talking about today. It's the first thing he created. Even before he created the sun and the moon, he created herbs. So I just thought that was cool. And this is what Madame Guillon says about it. 
God commands this dry and arid earth, hitherto apparently useless, to produce the green herb. This is its first production. The soul, in the midst of its aridity, is astonished to see communicated to it a vivifying quality, rendering it able to apply itself to good things with facility. All these plants bear their seeds within themselves, causing them to be reproduced and multiplied to infinity. They are yet, however, young herbs, feeble actions, little things, which nevertheless do not prevent them from appearing very great to this soul who knows nothing greater and who did not even expect this strange sterility to produce so great a good. So she goes pretty deep in, in the spirit and that's not always easy to understand. I feel like I have to be like in a state of fasting and prayer to really connect with Madame Guillon because she's pretty deep. Um, but she equates the darkness of the earth at creation to the human soul. And she says the first life that appeared to the darkness and to the soul and something that gave it a spark of something that was real and that was life-giving and that communicated to the human soul was actually herbs, was actually plants. And then immediately after that was the, uh, you know, the, the fruits and the trees and the vegetables and everything else was created, but it was first the herbs. So I, I just thought that was amazing. So I just thought I would share that. Um, we're going to talk about the benefits of using herbs and herbal formulas. This is nothing new. Herbs have been around for ever. Uh, and I just realized, random, that I don't have a clock or a time or no idea how to keep track of time. So I don't know. I think we'll go till maybe about 10, 10, 10, 15. So I don't know if somebody, can you flash me a, not, you know what I mean, what I said. So like 10, 10, 10, 15, let me know so I can wrap it up. I know. I love you, man. All right. So. Uh, the benefits of using herbal formulas. So I haven't done this before. I actually did notes and actually gave you a place to write notes. I don't normally do that. Usually I have all these notes and then people are scribbling off to the side. But I'm going to give you the five benefits of using herbal formulas. I also want you to know that we did create a book. It's like a 60, it's 30 pages front and back. But of all of our formulas with their descriptions. We hope to have it for everyone at the event. Didn't quite work out as far as printing, but I do have these full size eight and a half by 11 books um, of every formula we have and their descriptions, but I only have 15 copies. So I really, uh, you can have one if you want one, but I really w only want people to get it who are really interested in our formulas and learning about our formulas. It's not a book to learn about herbs or anything like that. Those are the classes we're gonna do later, but we do have that available. Um, but these are the benefits of using herbal formulas. And I do want to, you know, I, I want to keep it fairly minimal. But if you do have a question related to the topic we're discussing in the moment, feel free to ask. And I'll repeat the question and, and give you an answer. So the benefits of using herbal formulas. I kind of touched on number one. It's God's original food and medicine. So if you study the human body, you will realize that when you take herbs because they're created by God and they're created for us there's an action that takes place in the human body that's of God's design that's an intentional purpose why else would anybody who studied herbalism over the last 5,000 years know milk thistle is good for the liver and parsley is good for the kidneys and mullein is good for the lungs, and you can go on down the list because these herbs are made by God for the human body. That's why they have an action on a specific part of the human body. If you look at the difference in how pharmaceutical drugs are made, they're man-made, chemically altered substances that force an action on the human body, whether your body wants it or not, whether you like it or not, it's forcing your body to do something. So they work, but at the expense of human health, Whereas herbs work synergistically with the human body because they're created by God for humans, for us, for his creation. Number two, herbal formulas are the safest ways to take herbs, especially for beginners. So you can read about herbs and you can learn about echinacea and black walnut and you know there's thousands of plants out there and they all have different properties and different benefits and they can be used as different medicines. But if you just start picking out one herb and taking it, you know, there's not a lot of synergy to that. Um, there are herbs that have a stronger action on the body and, and 
you're just, it's just safer. It's just safer when you take a formula um, because like for example, some, some strong cleansing herbs like lymphatic system herbs like poke root and blood root if you've heard of any of these things, they're very, very powerful medicinal herbs and you would never just take some of that straight because in high levels it could be toxic but in formulas they work synergistically together to have an action on the body and it's just an easy, easy, safe way to take herbs. So I always recommend anybody starting out, just take a formula. They're designed, number three, they're designed with a specific purpose in mind. So whoever created this herbal formula, which there's hundreds of companies out there doing things with herbs, they created that formula for a purpose. A lot of our formulas hopefully speak for themselves based on the name. Some you might not understand fully based on the name because sometimes we're just kind of having fun with it a little bit. But like one of my favorite formulas is strength of Samson. And so that's fun because we all want to be strong like Samson. At least us guys do. I know that, right? Okay. Um, but you might not necessarily know exactly what that is, but we have a blood pressure formula. We have a hair, skin and nails formula. You know, we have different formulas that are designed for a purpose. Somebody who's an herbalist or um, a chi you know, chiropractors, I mean, anybody can get into herbs. I know nurses and medical doctors that are into herbs. So, uh, but ideally it's somebody who's educated on herbs, who spends some time studying herbs, maybe gone to school, because there's a lot of uh, schools out there for herbalism and has put some, some thought and some time and energy into, into creating a good formula. So that's the other nice thing about formulas. If your goal is to get plant-based protein or if your goal is to lower your blood pressure or your goal is to clean out your kidneys, you can just go take the kidney cleanse tea. I can tell you so many stories of people using herbs for benefits. It's just, it's, it's amazing. I just wish everybody knew so everybody would use them more because they work. I mean, people with kidney stones getting ready to go to the doctor and get surgery and they drink kidney tea for a week and they pass stones and they never have to go to the doctor. I mean, those kind of things happen over and over and over again. So, um, so yeah, the work's already been done for you by an herbalist who understands the actions of the herbs, the effectiveness of those herbs, um, depending on that person's health goals. And um, I worked with a lot of different really smart herbalists over the years. I was pretty blessed when I was living in Las Vegas of all crazy places to live. Um, I trained with three different really smart master herbalists and I just learned a lot and it was amazing. So number four, herbal formulas are affordable. And this is what I love most about herbs. You know, we don't, all of us are, are guilty to some extent of not taking care of our health the way we, we could or should. And a lot of that's because our culture, how we were raised, just the world, the environment we live in. We were all kind of duped by processed foods and things that taste good. And you know, we've all been down that road. It, you just, there's no exceptions to that. Um, and it costs a lot of money when you lose your health. It's very expensive to be sick, right? Can anybody attest to that? It's, it, it can get very costly uh, to go to the doctor. Prescription medications, you know, I don't, you know, people come to see me that are on prescription drugs, but sometimes when they actually tell me how much they're spending, it blows my mind. I mean, like a proton pump inhibitor people are taking for acid reflux and they're spending 200 bucks a month, or I mean, just astronomical amounts of money that people spend on these drugs that are actually detrimental to their health. And it's because they're just, you know, going along with what their doctor said or they're not educated of any alternatives. And, you know, it's empowering for people to learn about herbs. It's empowering to take back your own health. It's empowering um, to be able to do something to restore your health that doesn't cost you a fortune. And herbs do that. You can grow herbs in your garden for free. So, um, in general, herbs are extremely affordable. And when I'm working with somebody who I know is on a very limited budget, I mean, my default is to go to herbs and those herbal formulas. Because you can actually get high dosage, medicinal dosages of herbs, extremely affordable by taking them in bulk, in powder form, in tea form. Um, 
And so that's one thing I really love about it. You're gonna pay less using bulk herbs than you're gonna pay buying capsules in a bottle. Okay, who's bought capsules in a bottle? I'm, really, a lot of you haven't? Okay, who's bought tinctures before? Who's used tinctures before? Okay, so I love tinctures, I love people's different formulas and capsules, but you know, you are paying for marketing, you're paying for the bottle, you're paying for the label, you're paying for a lot of things, and it would probably blow your mind if you knew how much more you were spending on that bottle of capsules that was 25 bucks, and how much like actual powder and bulk that that would equate to, and how much you would spend on that. It'd probably be like a fifth of the cost. I'm not even joking. So for example, vitamin C for example. You can buy a bottle of powder of some really good companies and spend 25, 30 bucks on a good quality vitamin C, um, but you can buy four ounces in bulk for like seven bucks, and it's probably three times what's in that bottle, and it's just a good quality. Um, but we have to be educated on herbs. We have to trust our source. We have to know it's something good. Um, I like to give people equivalents, so just so you know, when you're taking bulk herbs, and you're taking a teaspoon, a teaspoon, that, that's not much, right? You throw a teaspoon in something, drink it up real quick, real easy, throw a teaspoon of something in a smoothie, that's like nothing, right? A teaspoon is like taking seven capsules out of a bottle. So if you wanna take a medicinal dosage of vitamin C or a bone formula or a liver formula, whatever your goal is trying to accomplish, it's way more affordable and way easier to get good dosages of things that can heal your body when you buy them in bulk. So I, I'm really big on bulk herbs and that's where I feel like we've grown the most is our bulk herb section. And there's a reason for it because it's actually affordable to the majority of people and they work. So it's a win-win. And then number five, you can take your own health back. And unfortunately, some people do feel reliant on their drugs. Without their blood pressure medication, their blood pressure suits through the roof. Without their diuretic, they have edema and they have swelling. And, and they don't know what to do because the drugs do do something. They do have an action on the body. And so if people don't know what to do or have alternatives, they will, um, you can be trapped. And it's not a good feeling. I don't know anybody who's on pharmaceutical drugs and just loves it. And they're like so thankful that they're taking this pharmaceutical drug. Now, if you were in a life-threatening situation and your doctor gave you blood pressure med and dropped it, you might, you might be thankful, you know, because that can be dangerous. But nobody's thankful that they feel like they have to be on this thing and renew the prescription every month and they don't have any alternative and the doctor says there's nothing else you can do, right? Nobody wants that. We want to be free. And that's one thing I've preached in my class. I say preach because, I don't know, I love the Lord and sometimes I get a little exuberant, but Something I've said in my class forever is that you know, we have a system here that wants people sick, that wants people unhealthy, that wants to take their money, that wants them to be a revolving dollar bill for them, and God wants people free. I mean, Jesus came to set the captives free. We're, we should be free, and we have a system that's designed to keep us in bondage, take our money, make us sick, and it's not good. Uh, my heart is to get people out of that system and on to God's system. And God's system of medicine, it, it works. It's worked for 5,000 years, it still works today. It's just that it's been taken from us and hidden from us. Hi, honey. You having fun clipping flowers? She's so cute. That's my wife, that's Jen. Yeah, hi. All right, so, <laughs> any uh, questions on the benefits of using herbal formulas? Yes, Ann? Um, <coughs> So she asked, how do you know how to mix, what herbs to mix together and how to make formulas? So if you flip the page on the back and you see what we're gonna finish with in this class, it's how to make your own formulas. But 
Oh, like, oh, like blending different formulas together as opposed to blending herbs together to make a formula. I got it. Yeah, so good question. Um, and how I would answer that, so she's saying, how do you know if you can blend different formulas together? Like say you're taking a vitamin C formula. Yeah, that's no big deal. Everybody takes vitamin C, but I'm taking a liver formula too, like for my liver. Can I like take multiple formulas together? The answer to that is absolutely yes. And the reason is, is because God made the plants, God made you, and the plants know what to do in your body. So because of pharmaceutical drugs and the strong action that they have, there can be strong interactions with pharmaceutical drugs. There can be strong interactions with pharmaceutical drugs and herbs. Because herbs are trying to do something the way God designed them to work, and the pharmaceutical drugs trying to override that and do what it's forcing the body to do. So there are interactions between drugs and herbs. There are interactions between drugs. But with herbal formulas, I mean, I, I've made smoothies all the time and thrown you know, some kidney powder in there and some liver powder in there and some vitamin C and just, you can mix them together. Yeah, and you, and you really don't have to be overly concerned about it. Again, because those herbs know what to do because God designed them for you. And, and they have the intelligence. <laughs> Pharmaceutical drugs have no intelligence, but the herbs God created have an intelligence. Does that make sense? Okay, so classifications of herbs. I'm just gonna go through, I just listed 10. There's like a bazillion classifications of herbs. And there's all kinds of good books out there that have a lot of information out there related to this. But I wanna talk about a couple of them in a little bit of detail just because um, some of my favorite ones, and I'll tell you why. Uh, adaptogens, they're probably one of the most popular uh, categories of herbs today. And the reason is, is because they're called adaptogens for a reason. They help your body to adapt. Adapt to what? Life, stress, all the things that are thrown at us in life, they help us adapt. What I learned about adaptogens, I, I remember distinctly this happening and it blew me away, but adaptogens give your body what they need in the moment. Again, they're intelligent based on God's design. So if you take an adaptogen in the morning and you take one at night, they actually have a different action on the body because again, it understands your body, it's made by God, it understands the cycles and the rhythms of the earth. Pharmaceutical drug can never do that for you. And I'll never forget when I was in Canada, um, I got into medicinal mushrooms a little bit and one of them was called chaga mushroom and they had this tea, it was a chaga mushroom tea and I was in the morning, I drank it and I was like, I was blown away at the clarity I had. All of a sudden it was like everything was more clear. I felt like I could see farther. I felt sharp, like brain fog lifted. You know, probably the benefits you p people feel when you drink coffee or something like that, right? You do, you, you feel like good when you drink coffee mo most of the time. You have the negative after effects of coffee, but in the moment you feel good. So with the Shaga, I drank it, clarity, felt amazing. Yeah, I was excited about that. In the afternoon, I was a little bit tired. It was later, it was like four or five o'clock. I'm like, oh, I'll drink some of that shaga tea. Give me a little boost again. I drank that shaga tea, I was like unconscious. I fell asleep. I literally fell asleep at like five o'clock. And somebody had to wake me up at like eight or nine because we were supposed to be doing something. And the reason is, is because those herbs have an action on your body for what your body needs in that moment. And so that's what's cool about adaptogens is adaptogens are going to help you balance your hormones. It's gonna help you feel more calm and balanced and relaxed. I think the best action they have is on hormonal balance, especially for women. Men and women need hormonal balance, um, but women really benefit from adaptogenic herbs. Most of the adaptogens are very good for the adrenal glands, which is what manages the stress response in our body. So I love adaptogens, probably my favorite overall classifications of herbs. The other cool thing about adaptions, they're safe for everybody. Anybody, anytime, pregnancy, all kinds of different situations. Adaptogens is just something you can throw in your smoothie and you're gonna get a benefit from it. All right, so antimicrobial. <clears throat> um, man, I'd love to talk about this for an hour, but we, we don't have time. But one of the main issues negatively affecting people's health today is microbial issues, infections, infectious issues. People don't necessarily always know it or realize it until there's an emergency and they run to the doctor and they feel like they need something for it. 
But the underlying issue with most people's chronic health issues is always infectious. Parasites, fungus, yeast, candida mold. I do lab testing on people. I find people that are 10, 15, 20 times the toxic levels for black mold. Now we know why they're sick. But nobody could ever tell them they've been to five doctors. Nobody has any answers. Your blood works fine. So one of the real reasons people are sick are infectious issues. Um, so antimicrobials, I think, are very important, very powerful. Um, I, I, this was kind of boggling my mind a little bit the other day, so I just thought I'd share it, because if you're not in the natural health world or the herbal world, you don't necessarily kind of know what's going on, um, but there is definitely a, a huge pushback and a cover-up going up by the government and the pharmaceutical industries trying to keep natural medicines out, because obviously it affects the profits of the pharmaceutical companies. But one of the things there's a big war on is you're not supposed to actually say the word parasite. And you're not just supposed to say anything can help with parasites or kill parasites. For your dogs and cats, it's fine. But for human beings, you're not supposed to say it. And they're actually making companies take the word parasite off of their formulas. So we have a formula that I've used for years by a well-known company. Um, and uh, it, it's got the word parasite on it. And they changed the name to VF, and VF is, the herbal term is vermifuge. It's the, it's the term used to get rid of vermin, or infections, parasites, whatever. So they had to rename the formula VF. Um, but it's a parasite formula. Now, what's amazing about this is that if people were educated, you'd realize that in sense, what they're actually doing is they're actually admitting that parasites are the real cause of sickness and disease. And that parasites are the real reason people are sick, and they're scared of people finding out about that because people might get well and stop taking pharmaceutical drugs. So, yeah, call it a conspiracy theory? Haha, <laughs> no way. We are deeply deceived. Um, and there, there's a plan um, to do some really bad things. I don't want to get into that because I love to talk about that stuff way too much. So, next one, astringent. Herbs that contract body tissues. So uh, a lot of good skin formulas might have astringents, or women who have an excessive bleeding with menstruation might use astringents, uh, internal bleeding. So things that tighten, tone. Um, Cologogs, a lot of liver, gallbladder issues. Number one surgery among people is gallbladder surgery, getting people's gallbladders removed. So uh, taking herbs that stimulate um, bile flow are very important. Um, that would be most of your liver herbs, milk thistle, barberry. Um, I didn't give you a list of, of herbs in some of these, but you can easily look these up. Uh, witch hazel is one of the most common known astringents. Um, if you want to look for adaptogens, just look at our, uh, just look at our adaptogen power blend. Um, we have another one called endocrine balance formula. Those are going to have a lot of your adaptogens in it. Uh, demulcent, um, mucilaginous herbs. So they're like slippery. So what's a slippery herb? Slippery elm. Yes, I knew somebody would get that. So slippery elm is a slippery herb. It's mucilaginous. It so soothes, coats, heals, ulcers, over acid stomach, leaky gut. Anybody with a, a, a bowel issue or an over acid issue, you're going to love um, slippery elm and marshmallow root and those types of demulcents. Um, that would be our GI Restore Tea that has a lot of those herbs in it. And we've used that for years. Diaphoretics. Um, I love this classification of herbs because it's herbs that induce perspiration and fever. Is anybody here a parent of children? Three, four parents, five, six, oh, more. Okay, so we've got at least six or seven parents out here. So you might be different because you see probably a little bit more crunchy because you're out here, but a lot of times we've been led to believe that fevers are bad, they're dangerous, we need to take an aspirin, we need to do something to stop the fever. And one of the most amazing gifts God gave us was heat and fevers because it's what kills infections. It's what actually heals the body. There's a whole book written by a Japanese medical doctor on how heat kills cancer. Cancer cannot survive in the presence of heat. So if you strengthen your body, raise your body temperature and induce a fever, it will actually destroy the microorganisms that are actually causing the cancer or causing whatever the sickness or disease is. Did you have a question back there? What's that book? I don't remember. 
Um, I think it's called uh, Heat Kills Cancer or Heat Cures Cancer. I, I think you can find it. Um, Amazon has everything on the planet. Yeah. I'm guilty. I, I buy from Amazon, and they're okay, taking so over the planet. The What's that? So we go into the sauna fix that thing? Yeah, so a sauna, far infrared sauna, um, heat plus exercise. Uh, that's what metabolism is. It's really just heat and how efficient the energy factory is working inside of your body. That's all metabolism is. We make it to some mysterious thing, but. That's why women need to work on their thyroid for metabolism and why they gain weight is because they actually need to create heat and increase thermogenesis in their body to actually burn fat and to kill infections and do all that stuff in the body. So I'm big on diaphoretics. Our herb, uh, our formula for that is called digestive heat. It brings heat and it strengthens the digestion. So I'll tell you one story. This gal, um, and I'll just say her name is um, Olga because there's not a lot of Olgas around. Um, but this gal uh, had learned, been studying health. She was really sick. She had kids. She'd been following this protocol for years where she was eating raw. She was eating mostly fruit. And there's a lot of people out there that promote that, and I'm not against that, but it's certain people that's great for and other people that's an absolute disaster for. So if you don't know what you're doing and you haven't worked with people, you can't just promote one thing works for everybody because it's just absolutely not true. And so she was struggling with her health, thought she had tried everything, and when I talked to her, she was cold, she was thin, she was weak, she had a weak immune system. I did some lab testing on her. She was one of those that was like 20 times the toxic level of mold. So I actually switched her off of her raw fruit diet and I switched her onto steamed vegetables, lots of sea salts, soups, hot tea, and the digestive heat. I said, hey, take a teaspoon twice a day. Remember I said this like seven capsules in a month? You should have heard this lady. Now she's hardcore and she's got like three kids and she's like, I don't care what it takes. I'll do whatever, I'll try anything. I want my health back, I want my family back. I wanna be there for my kids. In a month, totally different woman, completely different lady. Had hope for the first time, felt like she was healing. She goes, that digestive heat, I don't know what it is about it, but I take like a tablespoon three times a day. Like her body just craved it. And it's because she had infections and she had mold and candida and yeast and fungus. And when you have those things going on in your body, your body's too cold. You need to heat it up and you need to kill infection. You need to induce a fever. And that's what this doctor did who wrote this book is he would actually use mistletoe and lobelia and other herbs that would increase and induce fever in people's body. And guess what? The cancer went into remission. So, Diaphoretics, really cool classification of herbs. You know, cayenne pepper, that'll make you sweat. Hey, will I say, have you ever had cayenne pepper, the liquid one before? No? Yes. Uh, were, were, were any of you here for our health fair, uh, was it two years ago? Yeah, it was two years ago. Was anybody here at our health fair two years ago? Okay, well, well Les and I had a little contest with a liquid 180,000 heat, heat unit habanero pepper liquid extract. We started with one drop each, and then you know we're men, we're kind of dumb, and we're kind of like egotistical, and so it just kind of got three drops, five drops, half a dropper. Oh, I'm gonna do a full dropper. Oh, I'll do that. And so yeah, we were like fire-breathing dragons, man. It was brutal, of course. I set my couch on fire. Yeah. <laughs> and his wife probably too. So anyway, diaphoretics are really, really cool. Um, they're really important. So just know that if anybody's thin, cold, weak, can't gain weight, um, have a lot of food sensitivities and food reactions, they have a weak immune system, they're getting sick a lot, diaphoretics is hugely key for them. Uh, diuretics, herbs that promote water moving out of the body. Um, so these would be like your kidney bladder herbs. So it's like your, uh, your parsley, your bushu, your um, uh, uva ursi, your nettle, um, just look at any good kidney formula. They're going to have a lot of diuretics in it. Do you know what most high blood pressure drug, uh, high blood pressure medications are that you get from the doctor, the pharmaceutical drugs? Diuretics have an action on the kidneys. Don't heal the kidneys, force fluid out of the kidneys, but it just shows you have a kidney issue and you need to heal your kidneys. That's most high blood pressure issues are either kidney related or stress related. Nervine herbs, herbs that help heal the nervous system. So um, we have a formula called Chill. It's hops, valerian, and wild lettuce. Calming, relaxing herbs. Um, we have a relaxation tea. Those are all gonna be nervine herbs. 
Kava Kava is a very strong one. Anything that has a calming, relaxing effect on the body. Nutritive. Now, nutritive, I don't know if I made this up or read it in a book. I don't think I've seen it in a lot of herb books. So maybe I just made this one up. But I call nutritive herbs the herbs that are like food. They're food. <coughs> and you've heard the old, you know, let food be your medicine, Hippocrates. So herbs should and can be food. And what I call nutritive herbs are herbs, but they're really food. And so the main ones of those are your greens. So that's the alfalfa juice powder, the wheatgrass juice powder, the barley grass, the seaweeds, the kelp, the nori, the dulse, the bladderwrack, the Irish moss. Anybody who's read any of Dr. Sebi's work, um, really big into Irish moss and bladderwrack and some of those herbs for healing chronic health conditions. It would also include all your berries. So our, our vitamin C formula isn't like super fancy. It's just a blend of the berries known in the world that have the highest source of vitamin C. Amla, camu camu berries, acerola cherries, rose hips. There's just certain berries and plants that have high amounts of vitamin C. So those are all nutritive herbs. They're food. Anyone can take them all day, every day, pregnant, nursing, young, old. Um, these are the things you just throw in your smoothie because they're good for you. Um, people always ask me about a multivitamin. I've never really taken one. I don't really promote them. I, I think they're fine. Uh, a good one would just be probably a bin, blend of herbs anyway, right? Um, but we have superfood formulas and different formulas that are just loaded with all of these things. All these nutritive herbs that you can throw in a smoothie and get way more than you'd ever get in a multivitamin. So, that's how I would encourage people to do it. And then sedatives. Um, sedatives and nervines, there's gonna be some crossover there, but these are herbs that have a very strong calming and relaxing effect on the body. Um, CBD is real big right now, so hemp has that calming effect on the body. Um, kava is a big one that has a calming effect on the body. Uh, kratom is a big one that has a very calming effect on the body. So, yeah, so those are some of the common herbs. Now, did you guys get, um, did you guys get this little handout in your thing? Okay, I'm gonna go over some of our favorite formulas. How much time do I have left, will I say? You have 9.50, 10 minutes. 10 minutes or so? It's 9.50. Oh, it's 9.50? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll probably go like 20 more minutes if that's okay. Like till 10.10. Okay, so I'm gonna go over some of my favorite formulas because I think this is really gonna help you. This is kind of like what, what you're after. So for the young lady that asked about diabetes, you know, we have a blood sugar balance formula. But you have to understand this isn't just about blood sugars. You know, it's about healing the pancreas. It's about getting away from not trying to avoid all sugar, starches, and carbohydrates. Like you hear, it's actually getting away from fat because fat is the main thing. High fat diets is the main thing that actually causes insulin resistance and, and, uh, and problems with metabolism and diabetes. So there has to be a diet shift there, but we also have the blood sugar uh, balance formula. But we gave you our top 10 favorites, and I'm gonna mention a little bit about these top 10, and then I grab my list of all of our formulas because there's some other ones that are just, I love, and a couple of them because they're kind of my babies, and I've heard a lot of like really cool healing stories from them, so I just thought I would share them. But the adaptogen power powder is amazing. So this is these ad adaptogenic herbs. Anybody can take this formula. Anybody can benefit from this formula. I've had parents ask me if you can give it to your kids. Absolutely, you can give it to your kids. You can give it to your dog. You can give it to like, you know, again, herbs were made on this earth for, for, for creation, for life. So um, besides helping with balancing hormones, the adaptogens are the herbs that you can take that you can have stamina, energy, mental clarity without needing caffeine or stimulants. So if, if you want to have energy and be alert and feel good all day, you can take adaptogens as opposed to like, and I'm guilty of this too, is, you know, drinking the coffee feels amazing for like an hour or two and then you crash and you're like, why do I ever drink coffee? But then you drink another one so that you can feel good again that afternoon. Has anybody done that? I know I'm the only one, right? Yeah. Thank, thank you for being honest. I have a question. Yes. So like B12 or those vitamins that for energy, would that do the same thing as replace it? Would that replace those? So it's, it's different See, because B12, the B vitamins, actually is a little bit of a stimulant. So again, it's going to have a temporary effect. And now we need B vitamins and they're fine to have, but it's not going to give you that long-term, all the time, every day stamina and energy. 
if you take B vitamins, you feel it kind of in the moment and it lasts for a while and then it goes away again, just like coffee does. So it's, it, it's actually more of a stimulant that's happening with B12 versus taking maca and ashwagandha and astragalus and ginseng. And you start taking those, these are the kind of herbs that you start taking every day and in a month you're like, wow, I just feel good and I don't get tired in the afternoon anymore and I feel like getting out of bed in the morning. And, you know, it, it just has that effect over time on your body as opposed to the, what we'd call like the quicker fixes, which would be the, the B vitamins, the, the, uh, the caffeine, you know, those things are more, are more temporary. Uh, GI Restore Tea, uh, yeah, Ann. Sorry, Doctor, one more question on that. So, if you're taking a adaptogen, it wouldn't give your body more energy than you need, like coffee or something. So, is that, is that true? Or what? Yeah, so she said the adaptogens wouldn't give you more energy than your body needs. <clears throat> 29 times out of 30, no. It's going to be great for anybody. Um, it, it's going to give you some energy, but not in a stimulant type of a form. And it's going to build and strengthen your endocrine system over time, which is where energy really comes from. It really comes from your adrenals, your thyroid. That's where, that's where your energy really comes from. That's your battery pack, your life force. But for that one out of 30, uh, ginseng, for example, has a slightly stimulating effect. Now it's mild, it's nothing compared to coffee or something like that, but it's mild. So people who are very sensitive might have to go really slow. I've had people do the adaptogen blend and be like, whoa, that was like almost a little much. Well, their body's in a very sensitive place, that's okay. Maybe they start with literally like a quarter teaspoon. And as their body gets used to it and they start to feel better and get healthier, their body starts to just kind of accept it and, 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 and work with it a little bit. You can increase the amount. Um, most people, the adaptogen power, I put them on a teaspoon twice a day and they love it. I mean, we have a gal, <laughs> I won't say her name, she comes in the store all the time, we love her to death, but there was like, she was like having this really bad day, stressful, exhausted, and she just didn't want to do the coffee. And she goes, I took a tablespoon of the Adaptogen Power Blend three times today. And she's like, you know what? It worked. I felt good. I made it through my stressful day. So it was just kind of funny to hear her say that. So the GI Restore Tea, that's your gut healing tea. That's are these mucilaginous herbs that soothe, coat, heal, uh, ulcers, over acid stomachs. If you get acid reflux from tomatoes or citrus or coffee or things that are acidic, you have an over acid stomach. So the GI Restore Tea is going to help with that. You need GI Restore Tea, not PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, not Nexium and whatever all that stuff is that costs too much money and hurts the body and damages the body. Because it actually, that stuff actually dilutes your stomach acid so you can't digest anything and you actually become mineral deficient. And that's why on the label right there, it tells you that it increases your risk for bone loss and all kinds of different things because it stops you from digesting your food. Plus, so the, yes? Would, so if you do not have an issue like um, the things you listen to, ulcers and things, then like you just want to keep your GI tract just in good health, would that be good to take or not? It would be. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people take herbs just for prevention, basically. You know, maybe like a good cardiovascular formula or circulation formula. That digestive heat formula I mentioned. Bringing heat into the digestive tract is one of the best things. I love, there's an old Chinese proverb, I love it. It says, stomach should be like bubbling cauldron. <laughs> and it's really true. It should be a place of heat and fire to break down and digest food. And if it's not, that's actually a problem. So uh, yeah, you could actually take GI Restore Tea. It tastes good. It's actually a very sweet tea. So some people just like to you know, drink it in the morning, hot or cold. It's a great, it's a great tea. Um, immune Builder Powder, just people need help with their immune systems. What I love about the Immune Builder Powder, it has all the medicinal mushrooms in it, but it also has all the herbs that help strengthen the immune system. And we're not talking about like the stimulant immune herbs, which would be like echinacea. It's the ones that build, that's why it's called Immune Builder Powder. It builds your immune system over time to help you fight against chronic infections and things like that. Strength of Samson number eight is actually my favorite formula. So out of the 60 formulas we have, Strength of Samson is my favorite. And Mike created this formula and it is brilliant, I think. Uh, I'm biased, but I think it's a brilliant formula. And it's taken off. I mean, we make a huge batch in a bin like this and it's like the end of the week we have to make another one. We're like, what? Like, how'd that happen? 
And, and this hasn't been out that long. But here's what's cool about it, is when I work with a lot of people, and I don't want to get into a long conversation about this, but because of certain health issues, some people will do better getting away from meat, and they will feel better without meat, especially if you have kidney issues. So a lot of people want uh, protein, and they want to switch to a plant-based protein. So the strength of savagin has a plant-based protein. It's a pea and hemp-based plant protein. It has enzymes in it, so it's fully like 95% digested a few minutes after it enters your system. So it doesn't feel heavy, anything like that. It's immediately absorbed into your body. And so the, the protein powder is actually called Proteinzyme. It's created by a formula called, a, a company called US Enzymes. But the Proteinzyme is the protein in the Strength of Samson. But what we've done with the Strength of Samson is we've added royal jelly, bee pollen, alfalfa juice powder. So we've basically made it like a superfood, multivitamin, but with your plant-based protein. So it, it's amazing. It's an amazing, amazing formula. And so if anybody just wants to get away from uh, animal protein or you know, heavy, a heavier diet. So say you're getting away from nuts and seeds and meat because those are heavier foods and a lot of people don't feel good with them, but you still want to get nutrition, you still want to get your protein, that's what like this is for. That's what Strength of Samson is for. It tastes, and it tastes amazing. That's the other cool thing. It's vanilla, it tastes good, it's great in a smoothie. Lupe? Okay. Uh, when you make those bolts, how do you know you're getting all of them all mixed together? Do you end up with more of this or that? You talking about when we make our formulas? Yeah, when you put them all together. Yeah. How do we blend them? Yeah. Because we put them in this huge tub that has an airtight seal, and we get our it would get a big a workout. And so we're like, yeah, so that thing's fully blended. Is that what you mean? Yeah, and the percentages, I mean, are they all equally percentages? Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, that's the thing about an herbal formula. Okay, so you yeah, when you, more of this or less of oh that. yeah, oh totally. Yeah, when you create an herbal formula, what it normally looks like is parts, okay? So, you know, if you're doing a kidney formula, it might be four parts nettle, three parts buchu leaf, uh, two parts um, uva ursi and one part parsley. And so when you, when you do a formula like that, then you just translate that into ounces, or in our case, we're making huge volumes, it's pounds. So when we make a big batch of Strength of Samson, we're putting in eight pounds of protein powder, two pounds, I don't know exactly, two pounds of alfalfa juice powder, a pound of bee pollen, you know what I mean? Yeah, my, my, the reason I was asking was because then if, is it okay if then like you're taking be called separate or something. Or oh, sure. Death, you know, so that yeah. you know you're taking this blend, but I'm also taking this other. Yeah, she asks, is it okay if you would take something else in addition to that, that maybe it's something that's in that formula yeah. already? Yeah, so this probably would, this would fit in that category of like a nutritive herb. It's like these are just nutritious herbs that should be food that everybody can take every day. So if you're like just in love with bee pollen, and you take a tablespoon of bee pollen every day, just because there's a little bee pollen in the strength of Samson, there's nothing wrong with that. My question was more about the adaptogens. So like if you've got ashwagandha already in there and you're already taking ashwagandha, is that too much ashwagandha? No, you can't really overdo it. Okay. You can't really, you know, if it's not a stimulant herb, you, again, your body has the intelligence designed by God. So it knows how much it needs, what it needs. It can only use so much at one time. Yeah. So you don't want to waste it. And that's why it's good to space it out. Maybe you take the herbs two times a day or three times a day and kind of space it out. That might help you. About 10 minutes? Okay, thank you. Cool. So, uh, superfood powder with adaptogens. So, our superfood blend with all our superfoods together blended with the adaptogen herbs. So, you know, not a big surprise why this is also one of our favorite formulas because people love the adaptogens. They want to take superfoods instead of like a multivitamin because you get a lot more out of it. So this blends the superfoods with those adaptogen tonic herbs. Beyond vitamin C powder because everybody needs vitamin C and it's a great way to get a medicinal dosage of vitamin C. So any kind of blood circulation issues, varicose veins, just a weak immune system, adrenal gland function, you know, vitamin C is one of those staples that's easy thing to throw in smoothies, easy thing to give to your kids. I want to mention a couple other formulas um, and then I want to finish with that part about how to make your own formulas. So I'm going to highlight a bone and connective tissue formula. We've had more than one woman come in our store, told she has osteoporosis, got on our bone and connective tissue formula, came back X amount of time later, a couple months or whatever, 
because she went to the doctor, got a bone density test, and her bone density was improved, and she didn't have osteoporosis anymore. We've heard that more than once in this bone and connective tissue formula. But it's not just bone, it's connective tissue. So bones, joints, ligaments, tissues, prolapses in women, um, hemorrhoids, you know, any kind of a weak connective tissue issue. Say you just sprain, strain stuff all the time. You're always getting twisted ankles, or you got weak, uh, you know, weak wrists or ankles. Bone and connective tissue formula, I love that. Um, digestive heat, I mentioned already, I love it. Um, it's got all those herbs that bring heat into the digestive tract. Um, medicinal broth mix. So this is one I made last winter, and I was actually inspired by a gal who came to me who was really ill, had tried a bunch of things, been to a bunch of different doctors, and she said, the first time I ever felt better or got better was when I went to this naturopath and he gave me this soup and it had a blend of herbs in it and it, I just felt alive. It felt like it was bringing me back to life. Well, what was in that soup? What were the herbs in that soup? Well, it was a lot of the Chinese tonic herbs. It was those root herbs like astragalus and ashwagandha and ginseng. Um, but also all the medicinal mushrooms. So the medicinal broth mix is something I give to people, maybe more in the fall and the winter, but if you wanna strengthen somebody's immune system, you want people who are weak and lethargic and have a weak immune system to get strong again, medicinal broth in a soup is just a very powerful healing tool. So I love the medicinal broth. And then I, I gotta spend a minute on this, this last one because this is like my, this is my newest formula and man, I've already heard so many cool stories, but it's called Sinus and Brain Steam Detox. So I just really feel like the Lord's really been highlighting detoxifying our heads, our brain. Now to most people that probably sounds weird. That's okay. Uh, but I believe there's a reason people get dementia and Alzheimer's and it's not random and oh, it's genetic and oh, his grandpa had it. It's not that. It's toxicity in our head and it's actually lymphatic system congestion and mucus in our head. And I can actually see it in people's eyes. Okay, there's a ring that's called a cholesterol ring. They call it lipemic diathesis. That's like the fancy medical term. But you know what they called it back in the old school days, in the early 1900s, is they called it senile arcus. Senile, senile, senility, senile arcus. It's what they called this ring that would form on the top of the eye when people would start to get senile and dementia. So there's a reason people are having these issues. Also in our head and our brain is a lot of really important endocrine organs that you probably don't know much about, like your pineal gland and your hypothalamus and your pituitary that control a lot of who you are and how you think. So there's an important reason that we need to um, detox our brain, but also our sinus cavity, because people are walking around with chronic sinus infections, chronic sinus issues, trying all kinds of things, doing over-the-counter stuff. Doctors have no solution, so when everything doesn't work, you just do sinus surgery. I had a guy come in, and the reason he came in was chronic sinus issues for years. And it would, get, it would be worse in the spring and fall, but he had it year round. And it was like debilitating to the point where sometimes he couldn't even work. So I was just making this formula. I hadn't even actually like officially released it yet, but I, and I had it in my office and I said, hey, do you wanna be a guinea pig? And that's the cool thing about herbs is it's easy to be a guinea pig because they're pretty safe. So he said, sure. And so I gave him the sinus and brain detox formula and told him how to use it. And then he came back, it was only like a week later or something. I saw him in the store, he's like, hey Vaughn, I gotta tell you, man, I took that sinus and brain detox formula. And he goes, I was, it says in the instructions to do like 15, 20 minutes. He goes, I only did it like 10 minutes. He said, but then I did it for like 10 minutes and then like 30 minutes later, he goes, I don't know how much he said, but the equivalent of like cups of mucus just drained out of his head. He's like, everything that was in there just drained out. And I was like, whoa, like that's amazing. So again, if you have chronic sinus issues, there's gunk up here. 
and it's mucus, and it's probably involving infections. So the sinus and brain detox formula has eucalyptus and oregano and thyme and things that kill infectious organisms, but the main thing it has in it is the menthol. You guys know where menthol comes from? It comes from peppermint. So I gotta tell you this story just because it's funny. Ruvium, who works for us, I love this guy, man. He's a, he's a young kid, I, I, can't, I think he's like 19 or 20. But I want, when I was creating the sinus and brain detox formula, I wanted everybody to try it. And he came to work one day, and I'm like, hey, tell me how the sinus and brain detox went. And he goes, Vaughn, like he's just got this cool person. He's like, Vaughn, I put my head in there, and he goes, it was like two knives going through my nostrils and penetrating my brain. And I was like, wow, like that's pretty intense. But I'm like, wow, I guess it works. Um, so it was just hilarious the way he described it. But the menthol in it is strong. I, I, I decreased the menthol by half. I could not believe how little menthol you need to have an unbelievably strong effect. So I decreased the amount of menthol, but it's still very, very strong. And if when you first put your head in there, if it's too much, then just back out for 30 seconds and go back in. It'll start to dissipate. But man, that stuff penetrates deep. And it'll start to pull mucus and gunk out of the head and out of the brain. And I really believe that's one of the big issues in health today is chronic sinus issues. No, it's a, it's a steam. Yeah, so you put it in hot water, add it, and then you put a towel over your head and you, and you sniff it in. Now, if you don't get too much mucus in your pot, you can strain it and drink it. But you might not want to drink your own mucus. Just saying. So, but yeah, I'll usually do it and I'll actually strain it and drink it as a tea because when I drink it, I'm like, whoop! Like, I'm so alert and aware, and it's because those peppermint and those herbs have a, an amazing effect on, on, the, on the mind and on the brain. So I'm gonna just finish with how to make your own formulas real quick. Combine herbs that have a similar effect on the body. What's that? Question. You got a question, will I say? somebody has uh, ear problems, does that help as well? Yeah, ear problems are sinus congestion. So when people have ringing in the ears, vertigo, dizziness, I had a guy diagnosed with labyrinthitis. I hadn't heard of that before. Labyrinthitis, 20 years of being dizzy, falling down, blacking out, could barely drive, could barely function, 20 years. I gave him a sinus spray, had him do two ear candles next in each ear. That was before I even had the sinus and brain detox. He spent 20 bucks. He came back next week, he said it's all gone. He still comes into the store. It never came back. See, people are suffering out there and they shouldn't be because we're not told how to really take care of these issues. So yes, ear issues are sinus congestion issues. So to make your own formulas, combine herbs that have a similar effect on the body. So you can look at those classifications of herbs like diaphoretic and start to blend a bunch of those together and add it to rice and soup and food and all of a sudden you're bringing heat into your body you're inducing a fever, you're strengthening your immune system, you're killing infections, and you just put those like herbs together. Um, I like using a small amount of a carrier herb. So what that means is, is herbs like cayenne and ginger, and a lot in Chinese medicine they use licorice root, but what it does is it makes all the herbs work synergistically together and it helps move the herbs through the body. So if you take cayenne, that's gonna help circulate the herbs through the cardiovascular system and get them throughout the entire body. You'll always be safe with nutritive herbs. So I kind of mentioned that, but berries, greens, seaweeds, those types of herbs are safe for everyone and you can just have fun with it. Um, look up beginner books. This is an ancient practice. It's been around for thousands of years. The best herb books are actually the ones written before 1900. If you can find one at a flea market or something like that, they are the best books. I always. It's funny, you know, with modern medicine and everything, it's kind of become a joke, but they said, if you want to read a good medical textbook, just read any book on medicine written before 1900. Because after 1900, everything was tainted by man-made pharmaceutical drugs, and we lost our way with medicine and how to heal the body. Number five, always start with a small amount, increase slowly, pay attention to how you feel. We, we got to grow an awareness and and feeling our bodies and feeling the actions and things that are happening and increase, decrease based off of that. But there's no hurry. You can always start slow and increase it. But herbs, for the most part, are safe. And I'm gonna do a whole class on herbal safety uh, later. So any last questions before we break? Yes? This might be a question for your next class. Okay. Safety. So um, you said that you have a lot of people Yeah.
Yes. Herbs. Yes. And Yes. Um, is there a navigation of Yeah. It's a really good question. She just asked about, you know, if you're dealing with infectious issues and you start taking like an antimicrobial formula, like how do you navigate that? How do you make sure you're doing the right thing? I mean, this is why I do think it is good to talk to somebody, meet with somebody, work with somebody who knows how to navigate these things. Because yeah, you can do too much too fast. You can cause Herx type of reactions. The class I'm doing, I don't know if it's this next class at 10.30 or the one later this afternoon, but I'm doing a whole class on um, cleansing, healing, and restoring the body using herbs. I think it's the next class if you're gonna, if you're gonna be here. Is, is it the next class? Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna, that, the, the whole focus of that class is to understand the Herxheimer's reactions. Understand what's happening to the body when you take herbs and you're cleansing. Um, but yeah, you definitely don't want to just jump the gun, start taking high dosages of antimicrobial herbs because yeah, you probably won't feel well. So there, there is a methodology to, to herbalism as well. That's why I, I really promote like adaptogens, greens, berries, seaweeds. Like you can just go crazy with those. But when it comes to like herbs that have a strong medicinal effect or a cleansing effect on the body, yeah, it's definitely good to kind of kind of know what you're doing. Yeah. Let me do one more question. I thought it was, yeah, go ahead. Um, since you said that sometimes you can't really overdose on these, would you think for optimal health, like for the top 10 you have here, yes. like to just take a teaspoon of each of these a day, or is that too much? You're not really going to, no. I mean, yeah, you're not going to really overdo it. I mean, you know, you might talk to somebody in our staff and just make sure, but if I'm going to look through this right now and look at the powders, adaptogen power powder, endocrine support powder, immune builder power powder, um, strength of Samson, superfood with adaptogens beyond vitamin C powder. The only one I would say would be different would be the GI sweep powder. Okay. And so again, that's why they're they're in general, you can take herbs, you're not going to hurt yourself, but are you doing the maximum benefit for your body? And so the GI sweet powder is a drawing pulling formula. It's more of a detox formula. It's got clay and charcoal. You don't want to take that with all your other stuff. You actually want to take that on an empty stomach. And, and we have that on the label, but that is where it's like, yeah, you know, most of the time you, you can just take all these and all's fine and dandy, but you know, learn about them, at least a little bit about them, because that's not going to be perfectly universal all the time. And like she was asking, you know, you might not just take an antimicrobial formula every day without any purpose. And the same with the GI sweet powder. But all the other powders on here, yeah, I'd throw a teaspoon of every one of those in a smoothie and just have a happy day with it. So, cool. All right, well, thanks. We'll break now and uh, have another class at 10.30. And then our social hour, we're gonna do, I don't know if you know what's going on, but we're gonna do an herb tasting. We got nine different herbs for you to sample. At each station, there's two single herbs and then a herbal formula for you to try at three different stations. And then my wife and Aubrey made raw balls, and they are ridiculous. Um, I like the cayenne one. Remember, I like the diaphoretics. So it's, it's a cacao cayenne. Okay, sorry, I don't want to get all talking about that. But you might want to stay for the social hour because that's going to be a lot of fun. And like I said, if you are really, really, really interested in our herbal formulas, I do have the book that has all our herbal formulas that I'm happy to give to anyone who's really interested in that. Okay? Yeah, you can, you can get one of those inside there. Okay, so we'll break.